Hi, it's Michelle Nesky, the Posh PA, and I am feeling the love over here today. And I'm about to show you some love by sharing with you some tips on how to find a PA to shadow. One of the most common questions I get from aspiring PA students. So let's get right to it. Before, Before I do that though, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe here for new videos every week or head over to my free community, the Posh Powered PA community for tips from everything from PPA to PAC and all the things in between. Link for that is in the comments. All right, so let's get right to it. So first of all, why is shadowing important? Shadowing a PA is important and it's important to admissions committees because it shows your interest in the profession and also helps you to understand what the role is of a PA in various settings. Seeing a PA interact with physicians and patients can be really helpful when you're trying to explain your why do I want to be a PA, but also gives you just a broad base of knowledge about the profession in general. And so some programs actually do require shadowing hours where most of them it's recommended. So check your programs because some do have required hours, like 20 to 40 required hours. Some just place that in recommended, but I can tell you that almost every PA program is going to like to see in-person PA shadowing on your PA school application. With that being said, I understand that it can be difficult for various reasons to find a PA to shadow in person. And I'm going to give you a few tips and strategies today to kind of help you look for and connect with PAs that might be able to have you in their clinic or their hospital to practice. So the very first thing I'm going to tell you is use your connections, okay? A friend of a friend's cousin who's a PA, um, that person that you used to work with, your friend's parents, children, a distant relative, you need to be contacting everybody to see if somebody knows a PA that you can work with, particularly if your family is in the medical field. My family was not, so it was a little bit harder, but I will say that one of my parents' friends child was a PA. And so talking to her really helped me in the beginning. So use your network, use your contacts. If you are out there getting patient care experience and your workplace has PAs, that is a great way to find PAs to shadow. You have to be brave and bold enough to walk up to a PA and ask them if you can shadow them. You must do it. The worst thing they can say is no, right? So what you would do is if you have a PA in your workplace, you would approach them and say, hey, do you mind if I talk to you for a second? I'm an aspiring PA and I'm really looking to learn more about the profession and I wondered if you had any opportunities for me to be able to shadow you. Easy as that, right? Now, I will tell you as a PA that has worked in various practice settings, sometimes there are restrictions, okay? So sometimes we want to have a student to shadow, but we're not allowed for different workplace reasons, especially since the pandemic. So don't give up hope if your first person says no, you got to keep moving on and trying other places and other options to see if you can find somebody to spend a little bit of time with. Um, the other thing I will always tell students is to join your local or state PA organization. Every single state has a PA organization. So South Carolina, South Carolina Academy of PAs, you know, Texas, Texas Academy of PAs. And they typically have a student membership and they typically have local networking opportunities. A great way for you to meet PAs and find one to shadow. Plus, it's also really great to support your local PA organization especially for advocacy and other reasons like that for you to be able to get involved even in the future as a practicing PA. So just a win-win overall for that strategy. Also, think about your volunteer opportunities. Are there any PAs there? Are there any doctors there that might know some PAs? Um, you know, if you're doing a non-medical volunteer opportunity, I would still use those connections to try to find somebody. Um, I think that's a good way just to continue to expand your network, okay? Because what you want to be doing right now is expanding your network. Um, social media is a place where you can find PAs on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook. There are some Facebook groups that um, are geared towards PA shadowing. So you might want to check them out and see if there's anybody in your area. 
If you're sending a message to somebody on LinkedIn or on Instagram, you want to make sure it's professionally written. You don't want to just slide into their DMs and be like, hey, can I shadow you? You look like a fun PA. No. Has to be like really professional, like, good morning, Michelle. <laughs> My name is Susie and I am an aspiring PA student. I've been looking for different opportunities to shadow a PA and I see that you're in my area. Is there any um, possibility that we could connect and possibly talk about shadowing opportunities with you or someone else you may know, right? Something like that. So you're not just sliding into the DMs, like I said before. Now, with all that being said, when you're emailing or you're sending messages, it's very easy for people to ignore them, correct? <laughs> so one of the ways that you might want to do this if you're really struggling is to literally walk in somewhere okay walk into a local hospital a clinic a you know a family practice if you know a pa works there now if you're driving down the street and you see a sign with you know a doctor's office and there's pas on the outside perhaps it's an opportunity for you to walk in there and just say hi you know my name is so and so I've, i'm wondering about some of the pas um, that work here, if I could potentially speak to one or connect with one, I'm looking for PA shadowing opportunities. It's harder for them to reject you in person. <laughs> I know it's terrible to say, but you, that is, that is a strategy. Okay. Um, cold calling is also a strategy. You can always call a clinic if you don't want to just walk in. Um, but these are things that you sometimes will have to resort to, to be able to find a PA to shadow. Listen, at the end of the day, you want to be able to connect with a PA that will hopefully write you a good recommendation letter for PA school. So all of this work to try to find somebody to shadow is going to benefit you in the long run. Hey, you may even find a mentor in that opportunity, right? So don't give up. The last thing I'll talk about is virtual shadowing. Virtual shadowing became very popular during the pandemic. Now, in a lot of areas, um, there are clinics and hospitals letting students back in. So programs do want to see in-person shadowing. With that being said, if virtual shadowing is the absolute only thing that you can get, you're still gonna list it on your application, okay? Um, so you're still gonna list those hours. It's just that whether or not programs will accept them as shadowing hours, you're going to have to check in advance and it always, look stronger if you have in-person hours, all right? But definitely list those virtual shadowing hours if you have them. The other thing is a minimum number of shadowing hours. To me, there is no minimum. Um, there are some programs that have a requirement of 20 to 40 to 50 hours. I would say try to target 40 to 50 hours if you can. So that's the target range for shadowing hours that you want to go for. Okay, so I hope those strategies and sort of walking you through them will help you a little bit in in your uh what what was it? in your search <laughs> that's the word i'm looking for this your search to find a pa to shadow do not give up definitely start with your friends and family and your network and your extended family and your coworkers and their colleagues and their family members and all of that because that's typically how people find someone to shadow even someone like me who has nobody in their family who was medical. And then you have all those other strategies that I talked about as well, you know, joining your state PA organization, using your um, workplace or volunteer opportunities, you know, social media, walking into a place, giving them a call. There's lots of different ways to do this. So don't give up and hang in there so you can find that PA to shadow. Mm -hmm.